Hello, how are you? It's Doris, good to see everybody again. Today I would like to talk to you about idioms. Idioms. Idioms are words that, ex English expressions that you may hear. Um, as you're learning English, you may hear people say things and it doesn't sound at all like something that makes sense. Um, they use words which don't relate to anything that they're talking about. Sometimes it can be very confusing. So today I wanted to talk to you about that. I'll give you a definition of what an idiom is. <clears throat> an idiom is an expression, like we said, that doesn't exactly mean what the words say. For example, here it says, she spilled the beans. She spilled the beans. If you think of someone spilling beans, you think of, like for instance, a glass of water. If I tip it over and I spill it, all well, the water will come running out. If someone spills beans, that means they tip over maybe a can or a bowl and all the beans come spilling out, come running out. But in actuality, she spilled the beans means she talked too much and told the secret. It was something that wasn't supposed to be shared, but she talked too much and she told the secret. She spilled the beans, okay? So that's just one example of what an idiom is, okay? I made a little uh, page to share with you to also demonstrate what spilling the beans mean. And I'll show you right now. Okay, so here we have a page where we have the expression, what a steal, what a steal. When we think of the word steal, we think of, you know, maybe you're at the store and um, you see someone run through the, uh, the front area and the, the bells go off, the, the alarm goes off. And that may mean that, mean that they stole something, okay? When you steal, you usually take something that doesn't belong to you and you don't pay for it. But in this case, what a steal means that you paid a small amount of money for something. It means you got it at a great price. And it means that the price you paid was so low, it's like you stole it. But did you steal it? No, you paid for it, but you got it at a really great deal. So here's an example of a conversation between two people where uh, we can use this phrase. Person A says, wow, that's a lovely purse. Person B says, thanks, it was on sale. I only paid $50. Person A says, those purses are usually so much more expensive. What a steal. She got a good deal on a, on a nice purse. She only paid 50 bucks. Maybe uh, maybe the purse was usually two hundred dollars or 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 four hundred dollars or something, and she got got it on sale for fifty dollars. It was so low; it was almost like she didn't have to pay for it. What a steal! So that is what that um, expression means. So I'd like to share now um, uh, the easy English news because that's a <clears throat> That's something that I like to use in my classes when I'm teaching. And I find it very, very useful, especially when it comes to idioms. Um, in my classes, I like to go to take the time to go over um, the, the idiom page, which is usually always on page eight every month. And a lot of you do use this in easy English news. I know that um, a lot of people, I can think of a lot of people in the class who always have it with them. I, whenever I pass it out, I don't have to give them one because they always have it on them. And it's a really good resource for practicing English. It has a lot of current events in it and um, uh, also a lot of words. And I love this part here where, where they talk about um, how if you are not sure of what a word is, over here they have the words in, in black print and they have a star and you can uh, look up the words in the back. 
if you're not familiar, we have uh, page 12. You go on page 12 and you have a whole word help section. And that's really great because sometimes, you know, you may read a word, the word anecdote. What does that mean? I never heard that word before, you know, or even if you do have an idea of what it is, you may not know exactly what it means. And these are good short de definitions, kind of like a dictionary to help aid you and help you through the uh, different articles and uh, bits of information, okay? So perhaps uh, you can consult the library and call them and ask them, how can I get this online? Because this is a good resource to have while we're all stuck inside. We have the, uh, the crossword puzzle and all the different articles. There's uh, articles written by students, English students. But, um, but this is probably my favorite part of the, of the paper, okay? Um, this part is called idiom corner, idiom corner, uh, not to be confused with the word idiot but that uh, ends with a T, okay? The word is idiom, and like we said before, it means English expression, okay? So let's talk about some of these expressions that we have here. And maybe you've heard of them, maybe you haven't. Uh, it says, have you ever heard people use these idioms? Number one, it says to hit the ceiling. Here we have a man, he's on a ladder. He climbed to the top rung and he's hitting the ceiling. Well, what does that mean? Does it really mean hitting the ceiling? It means to show a great deal of anger. And then they give you two examples. Maurizio hit the ceiling when he saw that his money was gone. So again, did Maurizio climb the ladder to the highest rung and tap the ceiling a few times? No, it just means that he hit the ceiling. It just means that he was very, very angry. Laura hit the ceiling when her boyfriend kissed her sister. Uh-oh, sounds like a bit of drama there. But again, does it mean that Flora hit the ceiling with her fists? on top of a ladder? No, it means that she was very angry, she was very upset, she was very mad. And another word I like to use in this case is the word livid, livid. How do we spell livid? Let me erase that little check mark I made. How do we spell livid and what does livid mean? Well, the word livid just means angry. L I B I D. It means that I'm very, very angry. Okay. The next picture they show us is a picture of the word word. And the word word is dirty or filthy here. And it needs to be washed. And that introduces the next idiom, dirty words. Dirty words. What are dirty words? Are they words with dirt on them? No. They're just vulgar words about sex or bathroom activity. The word vulgar means just like what it sounds, dirty or, or rude, okay? Yusuke learned dirty words in English before learning the polite ones. Isn't that usually the case? When you're learning another language, the first thing we do is pick up all the slang and the bad words. That's why we need English class, right? It says uh, it's rude to say dirty words in public. And I think that's the point here. These are words that you probably want to stay away from when you're thinking about coming to school or coming to work. You probably would not want to use these words. I always say, if you can't say it in church, it's probably not the best thing to, to say. Um, but in this case, dirty words are words that you probably would not use because you don't want to sound rude or vulgar. Number three, play it to play by ear. Here we have a man bending over piano and touching the piano keys with his ear. Um, to play by ear doesn't mean to take your ear and start hammering down on something. But what it means is to play something without having a plan or practice. John never took music lessons. He plays the piano by ear. Does that mean John plays the piano with his actual ear? 
No, it means he understands the music. He understands the sounds. He understands where the keys are and which ones to play to make the right music. And he doesn't have to read anything. He can just play it by the way it sounds. He plays the piano by ear. But does it all only mean musical instruments? No. Sometimes it means that you know what you're doing. In this next example, it says, I don't know what I'm going to say to the boss. I'll just play it by ear. That means I don't have a plan necessarily. I'm just going to say what I think is the best for this situation. I'll play it by ear. Another way to describe this also is might be the term, you might have heard this before, but we'll say sometimes, I like, I don't need to do too much preparation. I'm just going to wing it. Wing it, okay? Wing it, this is a W. I'm going to wing it. That means I don't have to make too much preparation. I'm just going to wing it. I'm just going to play it by ear. I'm just going to see how it goes and then do what I need to do. Okay. Number four talks about rubbing elbows. Rubbing elbows. This one's funny to me because my parents, um, when I visit them, I can't really hug and kiss them. So my father will come up to me and he'll give me an elbow and we'll do this kind of little elbow tap thing instead of hugging. But um, it doesn't really mean to do that though. When you say I'm going to rub elbows with someone, it doesn't mean we're just going to smush our elbows together. It means to be in the company of certain people. The examples they give, Stacy moved to Los Angeles. She hoped she could rub elbows with movie stars. She moved to Los Angeles and hoped she could rub elbows with movie stars. Now, does she want to go up to them and start doing this to them? No, she probably might get in trouble if she did that. But it just means she's like to meet them, talk to them, get to know them, and uh, <clears throat> share information with them. This one says, movie stars often rub elbows with presidential candidates. And I think that's true. A lot of times we think of people who were president or who are running for president and their uh, influence with movie stars or people on TV. And we find it very exciting. And what happens with that is they share influence, they share ideas, and they help one another. Okay, so those are examples of rubbing elbows. Sometimes you wanna move up in your career and you want to find out who do I need to talk to to get information. That's called rubbing elbows. Alrighty, so there we have it. Some examples of some idioms that you might be able to use today. Give it a try and see how it goes. Take care. Bye-bye.